Hello and welcome to a very special episode of the Fiber Taste podcast. My name is Lærke and in this episode we're just going to be talking about this beautiful yarn. This is yarn I had um, spun up recently and I wanted to talk all about it and not have it buried in a podcast episode so I thought to make this little episode all about the yarn I will first give you all the information that you would normally find on a label so you know what it is that is coming up in the shop update. I will also tell you when it is in a moment. And also I want to talk a little bit more about the story behind the yarn. So the shop update will, the first one will be on Friday the 30th of April. So on this Friday and it will be at 8.30 let me just check so I don't say anything wrong, PM, Central European time. So hopefully my little guy will be sleeping at that time. He's been taking quite a long time to fall asleep. So I'm crossing my fingers that I actually will be able to sit in front of the computer and press update. Um, but I will do my very best. And that just to give you the other times for the shop update, it is um, 2.30 PM Eastern time, I think it is. It is 11.30 a.m. Pacific time in the US and it's, it is 4.30 a.m. Australian time and that is the next day. Uh, all this information is in the shop already so if you go to my Etsy shop, there's a link below. It looks empty because it's still not updated and um, you will be able to see the, the when the next shop update is. Um, yeah, so I think that's easy to keep a keep track of it there and also on my Instagram page I have a little clock running that you can subscribe to or like get a notification when the time is up. Um, in the past the shop updates have sold out quite quickly so uh, I recommend that you're there on time but don't be so nervous this time because I have a lot more yarn than I normally have because um, I used less of the Gotland wool in this blend so I couldn't make more yarn but I will talk more about the mix in a moment. Um, anything else I have to say about the shop update? Um, yes, there will be more than one. So also if you don't make it in the first one, you can um, uh, make it for the next one hopefully. And maybe I even make three. I have to see how it goes because it's just me packing and I don't want to put too much yarn out at the same time. So I will get behind on packing as I'm also doing a lot of other stuff um, in the meantime. I'm not only packing yarn. And yeah, I want to, to uh, keep the packaging special as, as it has been in the past. I make the, um, the label, I stamp it by hand, I cut it by hand and then I have the information on the back. And yeah, I want to keep things special as it's something I do only twice a year. So the sheep are sheared twice a year uh, in the fall and in the spring. And this is fleece from the fall shearing. Um, which means uh, it is normally a mix of lamb's wool and adult wool. And yeah, let's talk a little bit about what is actually in these little babies. Let me open up the, um, my little bundle here so I can better show you. So um, as you can see, it's quite rustic. Uh, and I think even the black might be feel a little more rustic than the, or the charcoal than the medium gray. It is... Uh, it's quite a rustic yarn, but it is just so beautiful to me. So, but first, before we talk about the yarn more, I want to uh, include the information. I'm so sorry, I get all excited about the yarn and then I forget what I was supposed to talk about. But um, the yarn is a 50-50 mix. So it has 50% Gotland, organic Gotland wool from my parents' farm. And that wool is the same that's always been in it. And it has, like the last uh, update I had, it has 50% um, of uh, local wool that I get from the mill and that is also organic. So I don't know exactly what breed it is, they're white sheep, so the, this is actually hasn't been dyed at all. It's just a mix between the, um, the Gotland and the white and this one on the other hand is a mix between uh, Gotland and a dyed version of the same yarn so it's dyed black to keep the charcoal color but the colors are very close to what the sheep actually looks like they have this charcoal color under their 
on the inside, on the inside, on, under the fleece, they are bl black or charcoal in the color, and then the 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 fleece can be dark gray to a light gray, sometimes brown. Um, my parents don't have any sheep with brown tones, but you can find brown in Gotland sheep. Um, and yes, so it is so exciting for me because it means that it is all organic and it's certified organic, meaning the the sheep have been living on a certified organic sh farm <laughs> and uh, that also means that they are treated in a certain way they need to have enough space well they have plenty of space so but still and the fo food that they get is organic the farms that they're grassing is uh, kept organically so it's very important to me um, as my parents have this organic farm and i know what a difference it does to the environment so I'm really happy that this was possible. And the other thing is that it's all uh, local. So my parents' farm is 20 minutes from where I live. And the spinning mill and where the sheep are generally just grassing is within, I don't know, I would say half an hour uh, distance. It takes 10 minutes to go to the, um, to the mill from my parents' place, but then you have the sheep are grassing in a bigger area. They move them around and so on. So it's very exciting for me because it means this has very little footprint it hasn't traveled a lot and when i send it out into the world you will know that it hasn't been traveling from one country to another and then a third one and then back and and before i was mixing in um Falkland merino which is very nice and and i know that the animals there are treated very nicely but uh, i'm really happy i could remove that step uh, from the process i will say though that um the Falkland Merino was softer, so the yarn I have now is more rustic uh, because the breed that they have at the spinning mill at the Yelholt Ulspinneri is a little more. Uh, it's not a merino. Merino, of course, is known to be very soft, but it is a beautiful rustic yarn. It has a wonderful halo. This one has less Scotland than some of my other updates, um, so it is a bit more woolly, perhaps and it is very nice, I think. And um, yes, it, there are 275 meters in each skein. There are 100 gram skeins. Um, and I would say it's like a DK weight, but I think with the it's listed as a sport weight um, due to the yardage or meterage, but it's, uh, it works up beautifully as a sport weight. So yeah. Uh, sorry, it's a DK. So I call it DK. It's somewhere in that gray zone between DK and sport, but it is for me with the halo it gets and the way it fills out, it is definitely better as a DK. Also, because if you knit it at a very tight gauge, it gets a bit stiffer because of how the, yeah, because of the fibers. So um, if you don't know Gotland wool, Gotland wool is very, uh, it is a bit harder it has longer stables they are very, can have a little bit of shine to them that it's not a shiny yarn at all if you look at this uh, of course it has wool blend in but still but it has this kind of little little bit of a metallic sheen uh, which i think is very beautiful when it's not too much and the colors are very beautiful very cool grays not warm grays um and yes i just I'm very happy with how it turned out. I wanted to talk a little bit about what you can use it for because I get that question a lot. I don't have many designs in this wool, uh, mainly because I always end up selling it so that I don't have any yarn left to design in. Um, but I did some, my first design actually, I did in exactly this um, type. It had more Gotland, but it was very similar. And you can see it here. It's my Reutour. And uh, you can see it has a charcoal at the bottom and a lighter gray at the top and it is a brioche sweater it was the very first design that i came out with uh, to have a sweater design to have published so i'm very proud of this one and if i get the yarn and um, you can see that it would work very well with these two tones so this one is pretty much pretty much the same and this one would give a nice contrast so that would be an example of something you could make with this yarn it is also amazing for color work so you could definitely use it for color work it is also very beautiful for cables it gives this soft um, effect if you can see on the sweater it um, blooms a bit but not in the um, 
when you have a very woolly yarn it blooms in the sense that it kind of fills out gaps this one blooms more like a mohair so it gets this kind of mohair feel to it and um, and these longer let's see if i can show you a little bit um i don't know if you can see but it has this halo and it's not like peeling it uh, it's actually very sturdy but it just has a very soft fuzzy look to it that that is very nice like you see in a mohair so definitely anything you see that uses more hair, you could um, replace it for that. I think um, I would not recommend this maybe for shawls if you're very sensitive and even if you're just moderately sensitive because it is a very rustic yarn. It does ha have a bit of a prickle factor because it has long staples that can kind of poke you a little bit. Um, I generally wear... Um, this garments as a outer garment so sweaters and like even jacket style um, garments uh, but I, it is so incredibly warm and very soft and i it doesn't bother me if it's only a little bit that's touching but if i have like a lot of uh, bare skin under it will prickle a bit so uh, you know probably yourself how sensitive you are to wool so you have to kind of keep that in mind but um Yes, it's just absolutely beautiful to use in color work, to use with texture, uh, not so much small texture, it can get a little bit lost, especially with the charcoal. But if you use it for cables and things that are a little more visible, I think it's it's very beautiful. And even just like a simple sweater with nothing on it, it would look like this nice mohair dream. Um, I can also show you on the sleeves here, for example, there's a bit of a seat stitch. So you can see that it is visible, but it's just a little more perhaps um, muted. So it's like if you're using mohair. So think about it uh, when you think what to use it for as uh, a mohair substitute. Um, not, uh, It's not as thin as the silk mohair, but we would no normally hold that together with another yarn, right? So, uh, but of course it's a little more rustic and a little more rough, but it is also so warm. <laughs> so it's a very nice sweater, a uh, very nice yarn to use for sweaters and winter garments. Here I can show you a little swatch where you can see maybe a bit better how it looks knit up. I haven't blocked this yet, so it's a little bit uneven as it looks when you are working it. But after you wash it, the stitches will even out and the more you wear it, the more beautiful it gets. So it is really nice and sturdy yarn in this way. If you want to mix it, for example, for color work with another yarn, I can recommend uh, taking a look at, um, see if you can find this yarn. Oh, that is called Dansk Pelsul 5.5 uh, slash 2. And this is an equivalent that they have at the... Um, spinning mill and you can see it comes in some beautiful colors that can be held together as they are the same thickness and almost the same uh, content this one has i don't actually know what is the mix for this one um, and also i know that there are some hand dyers dyeing on this um, base and you can look up Typo hand dyed and Önsul in Denmark, they do beautifully naturally dyed yarn and they use um, and they use this as a base. I think they dye on the white or on the light grey, but you can see they have some very beautiful colorways that you could use with the yarn if you want to make color, a color work sweater and you want to use some colors as well. I wanted to wrap this episode up by talking a bit about why this yarn is so important to me and so special because I grew up on a small organic farm and my parents had sheep from before I was born. So I never knew anything else than just having sheep around. It was a small flock and there would be lambs each spring um, and I would help take care of them. Sometimes if the mom didn't want them, I would bottle feed the ones that were pushed aside and I took, it was a very important job for me. I will insert a little picture where you can see me with my very best friend, uh, I loved that lamb so much. She was called Susie and I, yeah, she would follow me into the house even when she was not supposed to. She would just jump out of the barn and come to me. I would give her milk anytime I could. I would even go home from school, not at that age, but later on, I would bike home from school to feed the lamb. And it was just something very special, special memories from my childhood. 
Um, and my parents running this organic farm was also a way for them to to do their little bit to change things because um, where I come from, there were no organic farms in the past. Everything was very, I mean, just a few generations earlier, everything was in a way organic, right? But then in Denmark, the the farming uh, changed to a very um, more of an industrialized way and there was used a lot of pesticides and so on. And they changed it when they moved to the farm and they changed it to organic. And we could see that life was coming back to the fields, that there were more insects and bees and birds and everything. And it was something that was very important to them. And I grew up with this as a very natural thing. Um, so having the yarn organic is something that means a lot to me. And the last time and this time I have had the yarn spun, I managed to have it all organic, which was just like a little victory <laughs> or like a... I don't know if it's a victory, but it was something really special and that just means a lot to me as well as it being all local. Um, it's just something, if I can do it, I want to do it, right? Uh, and it was possible to do, so I've been very excited to finally be able to to have this yarn of my dreams and uh, to use the fleece for my parents' sheep instead of just selling it to the mill or yeah, I mean, my parents had yarn spun up a couple of times in the past before I started doing it, but it was more just for personal use. And now I can finally share this with the world and it just feels very special to me. So I'm really happy for all the excitement and the comments I get on this yarn. It means the world to me seeing the yarn in your hands and seeing what you make with it. And uh, yeah, so I just want to say if you consider buying the yarn, you know, you support me, you support... Um, organic farming and doing things locally and I hope you will share with me if you uh, get it because it just means so much and yeah I will hopefully uh, catch you in my next real podcast where I talk about other things than the yarn um, and I will Hope that some of you will manage to get the yarn in the update and if not in the next update because I want, I hate when people feel disappointed. So I think this time it will be a bit more calm as there's more yarn and I hope everyone can get some if they want to. Thank you so much for being here and I will see you soon. Bye.